This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. And welcome back to Off the Break Podcast. I'm Cody. With me are Kyle and the old ball and chain, Ken. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the uh, very sensitive, heartwarming introduction. Oh, you're, you're getting it for a while. It's This is SSI hazing. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Do you, do you feel <laughs> the burn? <laughs> yeah. You're a green newbie, and so you're going to get hazed a little. <laughs> it's going to be torturous. Be prepared. Right. I thought that's why I had to shave my head and walk backwards. No. No, that no. was just for fun. Oh, yeah, that's okay. just entertainment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Plus, you're going to get it double because you're my husband. And you made a big deal about that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, they, they Again. are husband and wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to lay it out all on the table. <laughs> Moving on. All my right. young single fans out in the audience can start listening now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, we'll go there. All right. Well, we got kind of a jam-packed podcast today. It was been kind of slow the last couple of weeks. We were like scraping the barrel. Like, what do we talk about? Nothing's going on. Two weeks ago, definitely. Ooh, it was that, tough. That was a rough one. Now we've got <laughs> worldwide global viruses shutting down whole film industries. We've got tons of trailers. You know, life goes on. <laughs> There's always good with the bad. Yeah. And speaking of good, we've come up with a brand new addition oh. to... The yes. Off the Break podcast. Yes, we will get to that. <laughs> we're going to start with that. Oh, we're going to start with that? Well, okay. No, let's not start with that. Let's start with um, Kyle's reactions to Onward. All right, just Ky- tease it for the audience. Kyle saw it Onward for an early show, and we got to get those reactions. Because, to be honest, I don't think Disney has as much faith in this. They're not going as wide as you would think on, this, on a Pixar film. Um, and... There's some hesitation with it, and it's gotten some middling reviews. Like they said, it people are saying it's very easy, safe um, story for Pixar. Nothing, no big surprises, no big twists. You just kind of can guess what's going to happen. Does that make it bad? Is that is that true? What's going on, Kyle? You fill us in. Um, I guess to a point, I can see why they would call this a more middle of the road Pixar movie. But even calling it that, it still is a very good movie. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's that was my takeaway from this. I thought that Pixar uh, was a really good watch. I think it's going to be really good good for kids, especially kids who are brothers. Or if there's just an older audience member that relates to losing a father or having like a brother close in their life, I think that was definitely going to hit home for them. Uh, so the message for what Pixar usually does was there. And I thought that it, it succeeded really well. I I'm kind of confused about the, um, the, it not opening as why, cause it seems like it's a really good movie and that people will still enjoy it. Maybe they won't feel like it's one of the pinnacle greats, like a Wally or an up maybe depending on how much you like those movies. But I don't think by any means it's going to be as bad as like a cars two or a brave, which I didn't think was very good. Yeah. Those- I still think even for middle of the road, Pixar, it's still, it's going to be really good. Yeah, those those other ones are kind of on the lower end. I think, you know, I just was surprised. And it, maybe it's just the time of the year. You still have kids in school. It's not summer. But, uh, man, I thought they would go fairly, like, take anybody at yeah. this point. And they're not. They're not doing a policy like that. Um, you know, when they do a take anybody almost policy, it's things like at Frozen. And usually they're summer titles. So... Maybe I was just being a little optimistic about, you know, how wide they were going on this one, but it just looks so good. And we have had no great standout product. I think that lends itself to why Sonic did so well, Mm -hmm. because it just has been just nothing for so long. And so I maybe was overemphasizing how important <laughs> Onward was, but it just looks so good. And no, it, I mean, it looks good and it is really good. I honestly think you would love it, Cody, and I think your yeah. boys will love it as well. Like, I think it is like a movie maybe aimed towards a little bit on the young side for what Pixar does, but even still, that's not a bad thing. I still think it hits its uh, themes that are for adults and for kids really well. Should take my popcorn buddies with me and yeah. go, go watch it. I wonder if there's a Bermuda Triangle happening here because it's the same time that 
Dumbo came out last year. And, and Dumbo didn't and go Dumbo as didn't wide. Do well. Um, well, Dumbo was it didn't, also dumb. It, it didn't go wide. It didn't do well. <laughs> Captain Marvel was March 1st, and then Dumbo was March 15th last yeah. year. And so I wonder if there's like a Bermuda Triangle week where it's like March 6th through the 20th, where there's something that just causes people not to go to movies. If it's like well, the Super Bowl creates a hole, and maybe there's something where spring is happening, so people are less likely to go to the films unless it's... Or spring break is happening... Um, it's a little early for spring break. It's a little break. early for spring break is why I was just yeah. curious if there was some sort of correlation there with previous years. Last year being a big one where Dumbo was expected that, to really. Yeah, but maybe it's just that the product isn't as good. Yeah, and, I think people were more interested in seeing the product of Captain Marvel than a remake right. of Dumbo. Yeah, Dumbo yeah. is a property that's what, like 70 years old? I mean, it's so <laughs> outdated um source material and and so i just who was the audience for it It was live action so it was too scary for little kids it it definitely played to older adults that remembered dumbo but i don't know but i think that's why like our uh, my mother-in-law took the boys to see dumbo and they did not like it at all but she enjoyed <laughs> it and i feel like that just spo- speaks to the audience like the little my little guys were like what is this i'm, yeah. I'm not interested at all but Grandma liked it. It was definitely a grandma film. Yeah, I find it so strange that Disney does not want to take advantage of like the start of March and just really go all out with like a big release such as this. So it must be a matter of them thinking like it's not one of their best Pixar products. Right. But even still, if it's not one of their best, it's certainly going to be so much better one that than people want to see. I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah, most likely. I don't know. I'm really excited to see it. I maybe have been overhyped on it a little bit i don't think i'll be disappointed though from what you've said no i if you feel overhyped don't worry too much about it because i think you'll still come out being pleasantly surprised and you'll think that yeah. just um on the same realm as me that it's a pretty good movie um i think that since coronavirus hasn't hit as hard in our country as it has other places I don't, and because of the cabin fever and the spring finally coming, I think people just still want to get out of their houses. So I don't foresee any issues with its opening. No, I don't think so either. It's supposed to be tracking towards, what, a $50 million opening? I think That's so. the last I heard, which is still... Last night's previews were low, so it's probably 40 to 50. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Where they? I mean, That's... $2 million in... That's not bad, though. Anything... It's not no. bad for animated, but it's right. usually Disney drives that number up just based on the marketing yeah. push behind it. But it's it. hard because this is an original story mm-hmm. and that always is a little bit more difficult to market. So people mm-hmm. are a little hesitant to rush right out to see it. It is animated. So all your business is going to be a matinee early evening. So early show, it was a 6 p.m. one, but I don't I don't know how with school and sports and stuff going on, how big that is going to be. So it really will be a weekend film. I know. Where's all the signifiers? We need some things that line up here to give us some (laughs) idea. Well, that's why I was wondering if it was going to be a weekend film or if it was going to have like a long run at theaters, similar to like Coco, which opened in like the 50 mil range. But I believe like it had a pretty long run. Well, we only got a couple weeks till Mulan. Yeah. Which then, but as far as little kids animated, if you don't, if you take out Mulan, because that's PG thirteen, you don't really have anything for kids till Peter Rabbit on um, yeah. the fo- on the third, and even April still, 3rd, I would and think then onward Trolls onward on the tenth. Peter Rabbit, you you've know? got four full yeah. weeks where it can really yeah. do some damage. It's got yeah. some light. It's got some time, so it'll. I think it'll do well because it's got the time. Yeah, that's what I was curious. It might about. not be a big, huge opening but it, not it like a will toy story slow- 4 incredibles yeah. 2 oh yeah no nothing like yeah, that exactly. but it'll be a slow burn mm-hmm. no you could see it doing easily four times its opening and doing 200 million for at the least run. three and a half yeah at least three for the average but it could easily do 200 225 and we wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it did that for the total yeah i don't know i think it looks so good it is really good. <laughs> you told me you went and saw that, and I've got so much going on outside of work <laughs> that I was like, how did you see that so early? <laughs> you you did have like week. this blank expression where you were like, that movie isn't out yet. <laughs> two, I'm like, one, I was like, what day is it? Like, did like, he go see an early show? Two, I was like, how could he have seen that one? It doesn't so, come out till next week. It's I so just, funny because 
at the start of the week, uh, you were saying, I can't wait for Onward. And then, like, towards the end, you're like, I don't know what week it is. I know. That just speaks to <laughs> the kind of week I've out. had. Yeah. It's been yeah. grueling, tough. This product isn't going as wide as you would like, and product's not holding up. And so you need stuff to fill in the to gaps and then to not get stuff because it, films because they're not going wide enough it's just you're pulling your hair out trying to find options mm-hmm. for people and i mean and options where you're just not throwing your wet your money away on minimums so you're not paying to play it yeah oh and then we had so much with our home remodel and our building going on and yeah cody's oh. brain just short-circuited like kyle just made his own uh be kind rewind version of onward in his backyard (laughs) i just decided to do it myself yeah (laughs) it would have been more believable in that that moment um well yeah so weekend should be good with onward uh way the way back did that have an early show was that available to go see it did not have an early show but you should be able to see it now i believe the showings start on friday morning all day yeah has it gotten uh been reviewed by critics yet uh yeah, I've seen it being a uh, pretty positive review so far. Is it is there a current review on Rotten Tomatoes right now? I'm sure there's a couple, yeah. Oh, I was just wondering where it was landing at. Oh, I mean I can look that yeah. up for you if you like. You've got your computer right there. Sure. Look it up. <laughs> ben Affleck's been doing quite a bit on his um press tour. Therapy tour. His his therapy <laughs> Yeah, Mea Copal tour or whatever. He looks it is. happier though. Like he genuinely it, looks like he he do, does. Though. I mean, as compared to he's not raging Justice alcoholic League, yeah. right now. Yeah, he doesn't appear like that. He's actually <laughs> looking happy, which is nice. Yeah, his press tour is actually with the press. It's not like gambling in Toronto at right. three a.m. and like a camera's on, being like, "Don't you have a movie?" And he's like, "Leave me alone." <laughs> and, that's, and then he's getting carted away by security for counting cards. <laughs> we saw you. Uh, the way back has an eighty-seven percent. Well, that's really good. It's like right next to Onward's percentage, which is yeah. which is eighty six. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, it is. For... I was worried because it, you know, they had that embargo and they weren't releasing the score right away. And for a movie about an alcoholic basketball coach, and there's and apparently no basketball, no basketball in, in the it. movie. <laughs> yeah. I thought the timing was interesting because of March Madness, and I thought there would be some sort of real basketball element to it. Because that would be an interesting way to, yeah. to look at it through the kids' eyes, seeing an alcoholic redeeming themselves. But no, just an alcoholic Ben Affleck playing a alcoholic Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah. is there not so much focus on the basketball <laughs> no. part? No. Oh, really? That's what I've heard, yeah. Oh, I'm hoping to see it this weekend. We'll um, have to find I'm out what you think. I'm still kind of curious. Definitely have to find out what you think. Mm-hmm. It's um, like round bud with an alcoholic, or <laughs> round bud, air bud. I was going to say, it's not like like you're trying to say round butt, and I'm like, get that out of your head. (laughs) Round ball. Round ball. Ball and hoop. Ball and hoop, that's right. Married couple. (laughs) Yeah. We used to have a joke about sports being ball and hoop. (laughs) (sighs) Those were the days before children. (laughs) Those wild days. Those wild days. (laughs) Anyways. Yeah, what are we uh, moving on to next? <laughs> so we kind of touched briefly on coronavirus and how that's affecting, you know, not yet affecting us here in this country, but it's co- like completely shut down the Chinese um, film industry there. Um, mm-hmm. Theaters are not open right now. Screens are down. They're black. It, they're just losing. They said something like $5 billion in the worldwide box office because of this downturn in the Chinese market. Um, We also have issues with some Southeast Asian countries and like Italy is shut down right now. Um, I don't know if France has shut down theirs, but I know that thing places like the Louvre shut down. So they're, there's just people are taking a lot of precautions not to spread this um, coronavirus. And I think in regards to that, because the global box office has been, so affected by this virus um united artists and um those at mgm decided to move back the james bond date from april to the thanksgiving corridor in november um one to recoup what they hope will be a huge global box office because james bond is a a global draw and um and two just to but they are going to lose out on all their spring marketing that they've been doing yeah. on it. But hopefully they'll recoup what they make 
globally with China back online. Theaters might also take a hit because they're probably looking forward to a big oh. movie for April. Oh my gosh! Well, when you're when you're planning it out a few months ahead, and other film companies are are placing their films around that time, everybody was getting out of the way for James Bond because that was yeah. going to be such a huge movie. Yeah, and it just left such a huge void because you don't want to put anything that's really big in front of it because you'll lose your your legs on it and then you can't put anything that week and so it just created this like two to three week void of any large um titles now luckily universal moved up trolls into that spot um which helped a little bit but i'm that last part of march beginning of april is it's looking a little dicey. Yeah. Um, a lot of holes. I'm to curious fill. to see if something will actually like explode and come out on top or if we're just going to be right in a wave of just mediocrity, I guess yeah. is the word to use. Yeah. Uh, any, anytime you lose a hundred, hundred fifty million dollar opening anywhere, anytime, even if it's in a holiday corridor where there's competition for it, it's tough. But to lose one when there's no competition and oh, you yeah. need those two, three, four weeks filled with something that's pg-13 content well I it's tough what's crazy is i think this move is almost unprecedented i can't think of another major move like this on a film that everybody knew would do well like there was quite a few moves when disney purchased fox and then re kind of scheduled the fox slate a little bit differently when um it's different when you're competing against somebody versus being on the same team so when they redid that, but that was, you you know, mid lane Fox titles, nothing huge. And you weren't thinking that, and you kind of were expecting it. This came out of like nowhere for yeah. anybody. So it would think that it was shocking. It was unprecedented. It makes sense when you look at the bigger grand scheme of what they want to get out of it. Yeah, They're just, for sure. And, and you know, they put it at a great time. I mean, November Thanksgiving is still a great time and we'll still play it and it'll still make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But um, it, we need something now. And so that it, it is a big hit to the theaters to lose that. I'm also curious if any other studios are going to follow suit, if they're going to be able to see if their release um, needs to be pushed back because of the coronavirus. I would think the, only, the one I was betting on that might change was Disney with Mulan because I don't think Disney made Mulan for this market. I think Disney Not made, really, no. made Mulan. Mulan for the Chinese market yeah. and and to have the Chinese market be completely just down right now mm-hmm. for this film that will do it'll do well here but it's PG-13 it's more of a war they took out all the fun stuff including Mushu and the songs and the dancing and they made it very much for the Chinese film audience and their and um, their sensitivities and everything mm-hmm. so while it, I think it'll do okay here it was not really made for our audience and, and you know, I th- it makes me kind of wonder, like, I think they're maybe too locked in because of advanced ticket sales. It would be and, very short notice. And the marketing, I don't know if it's just too short to move Mulan. So I, I, I wonder if Disney's going to take a bigger hit on that one. Yeah. No. Uh, that would be the one I think most affected. And they deal with the Chinese market, all the, uh, piracy and copyright things uh-huh. where if it comes out here it's going to get over there that's why they were trying to do a worldwide mm-hmm. um, one to combat piracy issues but now, now if the theaters are closed there's blown. no way yeah. around it you have to you're gonna take a huge loss over there because it's co i i'm sure it's a chinese co-production that I, and it's very important to the chinese government too um i i'm hoping that the that the Chinese government will do everything they can to make sure things aren't pirated. And I would imagine because it's important for them as well. It's an important title for them. Yeah. Yeah. They love all their Disney titles. <laughs> that is terrible. Disney, <laughs> excuse me. Disney titles. They just flip oh the D around. God. Nope. 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 <laughs> we're not going there. Uh, right. I, I was curious though. So you think it will play well in that long Thanksgiving weekend? Oh, you don't yeah. think any product's going to be moved? I mean, we have um, Raya and the Dragon, which plays to a completely different audience. You know, that's going to play to children. And then we had, um, what was it, Godzilla? Godzilla Kong. Yeah. And Kong. And that one can't may or may not move. Um, we'll see what Warner's has to do with it. But 
I think that's the one that's going to be hurt. I would think move. so too. Um, if I'm looking at Con or Godzilla versus Khan, and that's probably going to be PG thirteen, yeah. and I'm that I'm looking at PG thirteen James Bond, and then I'm looking at for something for the kids. I mean, there's I, I and I can only pick two. Then those I'm picking James Bond and Ray and the Dragon. If I can get all three in, I mean, I will take all three. But as a consumer, if you're if you're only going to go see one, you'd probably see James Bond, and then. If you had kids, you'd probably go see Raya. Yeah. And Warner Brothers has been one of the most flexible with dates. Yeah. They seem to move a week without any questions. They'll surprise us sometimes where you wake up and find out something's on it a week sooner or a week later. Yeah, that's true too. They're very flexible. Yeah. That would be the one that I would think that they should maybe look at. Either playing two weeks before so they can get their two weeks or um, you can't really go after you you either open it at Thanksgiving or or you open it at Christmas or you just wait on yeah. it. I can't really think of what would be coming out on Christmas anyway that maybe they, they would do that. I don't know. That's so far in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point too. It may not <laughs> so matter. Far. But... Um, yeah, so so much can change in this yeah. time. Um, I don't think Universal's thinking that there's going to be an issue with the virus because they moved up Trolls. So they, to fill that spot. Wanted that extra week. Yeah. Yeah. And so they moved it up. So if the, if the troll, if the virus hysteria gets out of control in the States that, I mean, I don't think it will. I think, I think Universal will be fine doing that. Well, everyone wash their hands and hope so. Yeah. Uh, What did I say? Wash your hands. Like you've been cutting jalapenos and you need to take a contact lens out. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good, that's a good way to say it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, what else do we got? Um, well, I was scouring the internet, and Edgar Wright is out promoting some... Um, what, what's his new film? Uh, he's working on Last Night in Soho. Yeah. And he was was doing an interview where he talked about, you know, um, what movie going and how theaters can still be viable. And, you know, it's always nice to co- hear from the creative side, um, from the... Uh, from the directors that, you know, they still want to make movies for movie theaters. And that was a big part of his interview. But I thought was really interesting in that interview is he said, theaters need to create experiences that people want to have outside of the home. So that, that movie going is only going to survive as long as theaters step up to create an experience when you go. And that's something that we've always been saying that you can't just, Ha- the movie theaters aren't the only game in town anymore and they're not the only thing you can spend your media dollars on and so you just got to look at the theater as a venue to draw people into and he i think was right on the money with that yeah uh, like you said it's what we've been talking about what been trying to encourage theater owners to do for a while is try to make that experience happen honestly him talking about all this stuff reminds me of what Norton was saying a few months ago when he had his movie coming uh-huh. out and he was talking about seeing all these different theaters and how much improvement that they could use in order to have more people come to the types of movies that he was making. So right. it was just nice to hear from another creative such as Edgar Wright, who is really beloved um, by many that um, he really encourages yeah. uh, the theater going experience. Oh, yeah. Like he said, he mixed the sounds and Baby Driver to be heard in a theater. Yeah. And you, you, that's for sure. Like, I remember uh, it sounding incredible, even if the speakers weren't good in my theater. But yeah. I knew I knew <laughs> he, he was trying. <laughs> yeah. He knew it was there. Yeah. And so I, I always feel a little despondent that in this streaming battle that creatives are going where the, the money is, which they totally need to. I mean, it's hard to be an artist and make a living off your art. So I totally understand going to Netflix and these streaming where the paychecks are. But yeah. it's just nice to know that still in the back of their mind, they're creating it for the theatrical experience. Yeah, for sure. That's not, what I like hearing too. Not for the streaming. Mm-hmm. Cash them checks. Yeah. <laughs> make the yeah. money you got to I mean, make. can't blame them <laughs> for that. They're just going. No. They're going with who is going to hire them for their stuff. But it's great uh, to hear them supporting theater still and knowing that that's yeah. a viable way to get their product out there and show their art the way they created it. Yeah. Nobody in a in a filmmaker's mindset is making a movie to be seen on a phone. But yeah, I, for sure. The only thing I'm still nagging me at the back of my head is these are still older 
filmmakers. I mean, Edgar Wright's not a young man. He's pretty so, spry. So what's going to happen with the next generation? Are they going to be like, oh, I've created this really amazing like five minute movie on for Quibi that you can watch on a phone? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like what, that whole mindset is going to be so different. Yeah. It's possible that that could be dying, even though there's people still trying to make like the theater yeah. experience happen. It's possible that the younger generation is just going to kind of ignore that because they don't understand probably don't understand the theater experience Maybe they'll ignore it until they discover it maybe it'll just take something some effort to discover yeah that's possible too i mean who knows if stuff like quibi will even last right like how long can you stand to look at videos on your phone yeah and it'll be one of these things that has waves where we are interested in it and our kids are not but yeah. our kids kids may be like oh remember Remember theaters? Yeah. So <laughs> and drag them back to the theaters because that's where all the cool kids our go. Our grandkids are going mean, to be super hipsters from movie theaters. I mean, I'm sure your real boys... To, real to real. Yeah. I'm sure your boys at some point will be like, what's Blockbuster? <laughs> what do you mean Netflix movies were mailed? What's a mailbox? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that happens all the time. Yeah. Just them like actually holding a photograph is like, so is this on your phone? Or yeah. or can I see more? No, there's one. There's you're one, holding you're it. Holding you're just the, like, where is the it? photograph. They're trying to swipe on it. Yeah. Oh, that's that's weird to me. It's creepy. Yeah. We need to go back to the old ways. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was nice to hear um, Edgar Wright talk about this. And he was even talking about this to a group of UK theater owners. That yeah. was what the interview was. It was pretty much like a lecture for them. Yeah. A but lecture setting. He was saying, hey, step up your game. Step up your yeah. experience game, you know? Yeah. You can't just have half stale popcorn and sodas and sticky floors. We've got to up this game. It's it's not a movie theater anymore. It's an experience. It's a night out. It's a it, night out. We mm-hmm. tell everybody you can traffic in two things. You can track yeah. traffic in nostalgia or you can traffic in being a, a date night, a venue. But you can't be an in between. You can't just be a, a, a multiplex. No, it has stadium seats, and that's it. That's what we offer. Yeah, you have to go in, and you have to be better in every way yeah. than mm-hmm. what it used to be. Because before it was good enough just to have the movie. Yeah, and that's not the case it's anymore. It's not not enough just to have the movie anymore. Yeah, you would probably have to go in like the venue type avenue instead of going down nostalgia, right? Because there's, I mean, people are nostalgic for like certain movies, but there's right. the majority aren't nostalgic for. Like film in general, right? No, no that's we've, why we've seen the, them be successful being a an older venue with the old marquee and the older seats because I think they that gives it character because yeah. that gives them the experience, especially in a smaller town, yeah, and in a big city where you have the competition, but you're a single screen downtown that plays. No matter what, people will go because they want to have that yeah. nostalgic experience. Yeah, that that vintage feel that just. I, w- I would call it more of an authentic experience. Yeah, it's not, mm-hmm. I think there's so many small theaters across the country that still feel real genuine and authentic and they're not brand new, clean, like just buildings. They, there's character in them. And that's what, and that's what younger people are searching out for is that character. Yeah. And that feel that, that nostalgic reminder but you're getting digital presentation you're getting the surround sound yeah and maybe getting reclining seats and a and a cocktail i'm not gonna say no yeah (laughs) (laughs) i'm not gonna say no to a cocktail and a recliner and a (laughs) i don't know how anybody could fall asleep in a movie i am so glued to the screen like what's gonna happen next that i could sleep in traffic if i get (laughs) if i get a moment well that's different (laughs) out warm sunshine rumbling car i'm out too (laughs) no i have to be like really exhausted and go to like a really late showing in order for me to do yeah. that and or if really the movie's not- bad and i'm really tired then that's happened to me before yeah one too many times i fell asleep during fast and furious hobbs and shaw and atmos <laughs> to, <laughs> we're to like be the, fair, we're, the seats are shaking no. right? and- <laughs> to be fair we were at a very high-end luxury theater that didn't even have traditional movie seats it had these like amazing plush couches right. and and yeah he was out out I'm like, you can't Stop. do that We're in a theater. Get, wake up. 
Eighty thousand watts of speakers. I'm finally and... on a date night without the kids, and you're Out. sleeping. Wake up and watch these sweaty, muscular yeah. men, Ken. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to ruin the movie-going experience for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by, by pointing out, "Hey, that car just lifted off the ground on its own. Weird, huh?" Yeah. <laughs> it's only fair to point those out. So, do you want to talk about this new? part of the podcast that you want to introduce or should we talk about trailers what do you think ken is it time dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> trailers no <laughs> psych. psych so it was a while ago back in the office uh we'll say um de during eric yeah. uh <laughs> that uh, we went through afi's top 100 list and everybody filled them out and um, everyone in the office had pretty good numbers uh, during the top 100 here. 100 fil- classic films. like 100 films of the last 100 years. Yeah, the for top AFI. 100 films. <laughs> and everybody had numbers in the 40s, 50s. I think Eric was somewhere in like the 70s because he's a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> and er- I hope he's listening to this. <laughs> he but uh, he'll probably Cody's like, oh, list yeah. was, um, let's just say sparse. <laughs> yes. So I like uh, what I like. So I decided, and <laughs> Kyle is co-sponsoring this. I, it has my stamp of approval. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we are going to be selecting a film off the AFI 100 for Cody to watch one per month and give us her her Cliff Notes version and uh, uh. review of the film that are considered Hollywood all-time classics. <laughs> yeah. That everyone generally agrees on that these are the all-time great of the greats. And we'll take your submissions, too, on our Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, send them over underneath the uh, podcast, add them to the comments, and we will add them to our list. But I have here the uh, AFI 100 Whew. Years, 100 Whew. Films. <laughs> what are some give... samples off of it, the list? What are some of the like best 100 films that I could potentially be watching? Uh, Tango and Cash, Turner and Hooch. You said Tango and Cash. <laughs> Turner and Hooch. Really? Was on that list? You went with Tango and Cash number one. Rainbow Last Blood. <laughs> yeah, stop it. No. Okay. For a second <laughs> there, I was Cash. like, "What?" <laughs> uh, the top five: Citizen Kane, The Godfather, The Original, Casablanca, Raging Bull, Singing in the Rain. So there's lots of good classics, none of which are going I've, to get Cody excited about. I've never <laughs> seen any of those. <laughs> which is crazy because I'm grew up in this industry. I grew up around movies. I've watched I've watched a lot of movies in my life. Just not those you movies. You like what you like. I like what I like. <laughs> there so out of these we're the for, for the first time to let her dip her toe into the water, we're gonna oh, let her select one from the top five. Oh, I get to a select a, one from the top five? To get you into this, to let you just dip your toe in the cinematic universe okay, that what is... what were they again? Citizen Kane, The Godfather. <laughs> what? That's the only thing you would know about that movie. It's because... a sled. I know that too. <laughs> yeah, Black this is going to be great. <laughs> this is going to be hysterical. She... <laughs> Citizen Kane, The Godfather, Casablanca, Raging Bull, or Singing in the Rain. Now, you're required to watch one of these and then give us What's Raging Bull about? It's a (laughs) boxing movie. Okay, just, I was just asking. What's it about? I don't know what it's about. Robert De Niro, Martin Scorsese, Joe Pesci. Pretty much everything that makes a movie great. (laughs) (laughs) It has a very happy ending, so you'll be glad to know that, that everything turns out well for everyone. It's Martin Scorsese's Rocky. Does he die in in the rain? We'll wait and see. Okay. Maybe that might be on my list. Wait. Okay, what were they again? Casablanca. Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. The Godfather. The Godfather. Oh, Raging Bull. You're just trying to get me to watch the Godfather. The no, I'm trying to get me to watch The Godfather. I don't I don't really want to watch The Godfather. Have you go uh <laughs> next to me. Oh God. If I watch The Godfather, will this shenanigans stop? No, no, because, <laughs> because what? <laughs> then we can go into the the next top five, which is Gone with the Wind, Lawrence of Arabia, Schindler's List, Vertigo, Wizard of Oz. You've already seen, so you don't get to watch it again and okay. take it off your list. But Darn. still a great movie. That's one of the top ten of all time films that Cody's seen. One. 
10%. Well, who hasn't seen Wizard of Oz? I mean, come on. Most people have seen the others, though. Really? Really? Like, pe- Do people have a cursory knowledge like I do of what happens in these films? Except for I didn't know about Raging Bull. But <laughs> I knew about what happens in all the other films. Or do they actually have sit down and watch them? Yes. Yes. No? <laughs> They're part. Of, yeah. How many has Kyle seen? Yes, of those? to both of those. Kyle and I were, I believe, like between fifty and seventy. No, of the top ten. Of the top ten, Kyle's seen all of these. Mm, that's actually not true. I know I've seen seen in the rain. I've seen Casablanca. I've seen Wizard of Oz. I'm trying to. Re- I'm trying to remember the rest of them. I actually have not seen Citizen Kane, which is unfortunate. That one I do need to see. Um, I'm trying to remember as well if I've seen Gone with the Wind. That one's very possible, though. Knowing how I grew up, I probably have seen Gone with the Wind. So if Kyle has only seen three, he's seen 300% more than you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but has he seen every single Star is Born that was made? No. Yeah. Oddly enough, not on this list. True, so I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. We see what we see. <laughs> no, that's fair. There's there's going to be like quite a couple that you choose that I probably was, won't have seen because I'm very have you seen young. seen all the Star Trek movies? No, but I'm more of a Star Wars fan. I'm both. I've seen uh, all those. At have least she's fair. All? At Oddly least enough, she's fair. Only Star Wars, A New Hope is on this list. None of those movies are what? on this list. Return of the Jedi is not on the list. Empire Strikes Back is not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of list is this? Ugh. Well, this, at least a Star Wars is movie is on the, the list. list. If we're going to pick a list, this is the list. True. Okay. Return of the Jedi is not going to be at the top of any one of these lists. Is re- well, Raging, no, that's true. Raging Bull. Movies with Ewoks. Rank them. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Number one. Yay. It's clearly Return of the Jedi. <laughs> um, so Raging Bull is in color, right? And Seeing the Rain is in color. Raging Bull is in black and white, I believe. Is it? I thought it was. Mm-hmm. In color or black and white? In in black and white, I mean. I believe it's black and white. Oh my gosh, you're killing me here. <laughs> so is I'm this go decision with in the rain? Oh. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We you can you can decide. There's not I, a. Isn't Fred Astaire in it? Yeah, and. You're seeing, Ken, you're, Ken is you're so confident. Up. You're so confident in like, all go, of your Google beliefs. Like, is it Fred Google Astaire it. in it? And yeah. you're like. Because the dancing movie, right? <laughs> yeah, fifties. It's got to be him. He's bound to be in one of these at some point. <laughs> Was Gary Cooper in that one? <laughs> All right. Well, Kay. now that that fun is done, so I'm going to watch Singing in the Rain in the next seven days, and she will give you her update. Are you thinking of Gene Kelly? <laughs> I don't. No, and Fred Astaire. No, he's not. Is Gene Kelly in it? Yeah, Gene Kelly's in it. Who else is in it? Uh, Debbie Reynolds. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Debbie Reynolds. Like Reynolds rap? <laughs> like Carrie Fisher's mom? <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Seeing in the Rain, is that going to be the first one for this? Um, yep. Play? I'm excited now. We're playing six degrees of separation with Ewoks here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Everybody knows Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie because of the Ewoks. There's there's a demographic for Ewok yeah. love, that's for sure. It's also re- it's also the best story of redemption, Darth Vader. Speaking of Get divisive wrote. characters owned by Disney, the dark hero <laughs> in Luke Skywalker. Great transition, Ken. Keep it going. It. <laughs> Speaking of divisive characters owned by Disney, okay. Artemis Fowl trailer came out this week. <laughs> I thought that one was so much better than the ones we had seen last year. You know, Artemis Artemis Fowl was supposed to come out in I think August of last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it got pushed to May. Yeah, and then it got pushed this year. I, and it was kind of swept up in the whole Disney Fox acquisition thing. So a lot of stuff got reordered. And, and I think this trailer cut was so much better than what we were getting for the August release. Well, I think the last one was supposed to be like a teaser and not showing too much. That seems know, like it, how it usually yeah. works. But yeah, even still, though. It, they didn't show Colin Farrell at all in those. and That is true. That was a big surprise for me. And even they I showed did not know the that. the weird fairy metamorphosis part yeah i didn't like that but i don't know well i think it'll be okay it'll it'll just be an okay film it but looks like this a, trailer was much better it looks like a good time for kids um i just yeah. don't know if the demographic is gonna be able to recognize artemis fowl like that was those yeah. books kind of were like from my 
generation, and I don't think we're dying for like an Artemis Fowl movie. And I, I, when I was watching Onward, they showed the trailer for this, and there was a pair in the back like, you know, those are books. And the kid was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know if that's um, going to work out as well as they're hoping for. I but it was a solid trailer. I assumed it was some Harry Potter thing. Bef- just seeing the name yeah. yeah it's like about the the owls he's like a <laughs> it's an owl he's spin-off. like a young boy genius master like mastermind thief i think is what his yeah like i guess his dad is a thief so now he's a thief i think yeah. that's the the gist what, of what it. it yeah but there's fairies and a whole like other magical realm and very exciting the trailer looked much better, though. I was, I yeah, actually was. I, it will promote it better. I was actually so much more interested in it from this trailer than mm-hmm. I was before. And there's plenty of other kids' trailers out now because of Onward. Yeah. And yeah. I saw them all at the theater. So how did you like the connected trailer? Oh, that's it, from it's Sony probably animation. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of um, Spider Verse's animation to a degree, not quite it's like different. the same, but yeah. it's yeah, it doesn't have and the it's... texturing that Spider Verse's, the detail texturing that that one had, but yeah. it is definitely a Sony animated, more like Birds, it's Angry birds. birds. Sorry, Angry oh, Birds. Oh, Angry Birds. Okay, yeah, it's like a medium version of the Spider Verse animation, but it has yeah. the the call outs and the changes and the the graphics. Yeah. which is awesome and that's the way it has you have to show animation now to make it stand out from right. Disney. Yeah. But Connected follows um this dad who wants to take the family on a road trip cuz his daughter is heading off to college mm-hmm. and he's feeling like he's being disconnected from her. Yeah. So, and then on their road trip um what happens? Is a zombie robots attack. Robots. Okay. I was like zombie apocalypse. Well, I robot? think it's like kind of a company similar to Apple, who like makes a personal robot for like your home, but they all turn evil, even we though they just, promise they we wouldn't. We just watched this movie, it on Netflix last night called Next Gen. It's like almost the exact same premise. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but it doesn't have a dog in it. It does have a dog in it, and he has swear words, and they have to do the bleep out filter. Oh my god! You didn't watch the movie? No, I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, and, when he would be like, rah, 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 and be like, bleep, 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 in the translator. Well, <laughs> like, this is not appropriate for kids. It would have been my favorite trailer if the Scoob trailer did not show up, and I'm all for that movie because that's my childhood. At first, I was like, oh, Warner's like Scooby Doo. No one watches Scooby Doo anymore. But then I saw this trailer, and I'm like, oh, this looks so cute. They, they made it for modern audiences. Yeah. Now. Brand yeah. new, fresh animation, and it's got the uh, Judd Apatow esque like callouts and jokes and stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they they do they tag their jokes. They do line after line, mm-hmm. yeah. As opposed to just letting the joke sit there, they have somebody has a joke and then they come up with something on top of it. Yeah, and it's right. it's looks like a real modern remake, yeah. which you don't see. It's kind of like oh, we took parts of this and parts of this. It's like oh no, this could be the Scooby Doo that people remember. Well, at least this this generation. this generation. But I mean, it could be for our, our kids. There would yeah. be no like, oh, yeah. this was in the seventies. Like, no, this was Scooby Doo. Right. Well, <laughs> but our kids like Scooby Doo, and they've watched the older stuff. Scooby Doo's a little scary, though. A little Some scary. of it. A little scary. Some of it is. Some this one it. doesn't seem like it'll be no. as scary. This one will be good for them. Yeah. So we talked about Artemis Fowl connected, which looked so funny. I laughed during that trailer. I just think it looks really good, and yeah, I like I do seeing. Too good animation from a company other than disney right now so and it's coming out nice. in september so that yeah. i think it's possible that that could really be good yeah september like, is kind timing. of a dumping ground but this looks really good yeah so i'm hoping that it actually makes an impact right mm-hmm. um and then did you guys watch the secret garden trailer i actually did <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, i did you see the the other one with um oh Who's in it? The other secret garden. I forget who's in it, but I'm pretty sure I no, have. There's like a, no, like I'm actually a famous actress. Yeah. Me 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 me. <laughs> Ken, you're not a she's fan not of the Secret Garden, that classic story. Is that... oh. British girls, a magical garden. Yeah. Orphan <sighs> has to go live with an uncle, finds her cousin, bedridden. Yeah. Um, I thought. Everything of the '93 movie. Yeah, the '93 movie. Okay. I'll, while you talk about it, I'll try and look. Yeah, at the I name. thought this one um, looked like it. They played up the magic part of it more, and so I just I feel like 
with these movies and the way modern audiences are like in the 90s you could have a kids movie that was like live action like this and kind of artsy and kids would go to it yeah kind of serious not like trying to rely on yeah but i don't think fantasy kids today like or are ever really exposed those kind of movies so that's just not in their tastes and so i think secret garden looks like a movie for again adults Mm -hmm. this could be a third like pg swing and a miss for stx with I don't had, think it's a swing and a miss. They, it, it, it'll it it'll just not mm, be yeah, for kids if had, they need to market it for but, adults but and then, grandparents. But what adults are really wanting the Secret Garden? Like even the 93 version, I don't think people were like, oh my gosh, well, I love that version. Colin like I've Firth seen it, but I don't. It, and it looks diverse casting. I mean, Artemis Fowl has Colin Farrell in it, but it's... yeah. I, I don't know. I just don't see this one really working out. There's a reason why they just announced that this movie is releasing in April. Right. I thought it looked yeah. pretty, though. Are I you thought... thinking of Maggie Smith, by the way? Yes. Thank okay. you. Yeah. I forgot she was in it as well. Yeah. And then the trailer that dropped this week, Greyhound. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. At Did first, you guys like this one? At first, I was like, oh, another war movie. We're killing Nazis. Like, I, who just, I'm over movie these. But it's Tom Hanks, and it's submarines, and it looks so good. I'm like, oh, they got me again. Tom Hanks killing Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did worry with, given, like, politics today, are people going and rooting for the wrong side on that film now? No, it's Tom Hanks. I hope not. Nobody yeah, moves. even Nazis love Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah. everybody loves Tom Hanks. <laughs> He's so good. He was Mr. Rogers. Everyone loves Tom Hanks. <laughs> Honestly, this trailer didn't really hook me as much as I wanted it to. Really? It totally got me. Yeah, Maybe I don't know. I, was... I don't know what it was about it. Like, I'm interested to see Tom Hanks making a screenplay, but yeah. beyond that, it's just did the imagery. Did he write imagery. the screenplay for this? Yeah. He did. This no. is the first one he's written since Larry Crown. Oh. So it's been almost 10 years since mm-hmm. he's had his own writing on screen uh-huh. but being in the experience of saving private ryan and band of brothers and the pacific which he was all involved in like, yeah bridge of spies as well to an yeah, extent yeah i don't know how this could miss like i am so excited for this when does it come out it, it releases in june june that's right it comes out and then doesn't um oh does it does it come out what's the re- release because i'm thinking it's around the time of wonder woman and maverick yeah wonder woman comes out june 5th and i believe okay. then two then this gives it like two weeks and then this and then two weeks in maverick yes mike mm-hmm. is in the way of my vision <laughs> um yeah wonder Fun. woman june 5th and then greyhound and candy man come out june 12th mm-hmm. and then maverick's the mm-hmm. week before the fourth right yeah that's right it, mm-hmm. it moved its release date to like the wednesday of the last week of june yeah. I believe. I, yeah, that's what I'm wondering if, like, it will be a really good movie, I'm sure, but is it going to, like, play well? It's going to be the... Wonder Woman is a patriotic-ish movie, but this is going to be the movie that is going to move people into theaters before Maverick. You know, I am so excited. I know. <laughs> I'm really excited, too. It got me. I was not high on this at all, going hmm. in and being like, oh, another war movie. And I think it'll play older audience. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Tom Hanks isn't enough just to bring people in, although he is very well liked. But um, I think, we, as we could see with A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, if he's not the central part, then then it falls apart. So I like that in Greyhound, he's the captain. He It's on him to save his men, and that he's back to being the focus on it because... I think that beautiful day in the neighborhood really suffered by it being the story about the reporter and not about Mr. Rogers. I, I mean, it still was a good movie, but I think if you mean if people yeah. hear that it's not really about Mr. Rogers, but about the reporter, is that what you mean? Oh, I, that's yeah. the feedback okay. I got that it, gotcha. that the film wasn't, and so I think yeah, Tom which Hanks is correct, is great, yeah. and I think he gets people in the door, but if he's not the focus then I think it suffers. Whereas on Greyhound, I think he is the focus. And so yeah. his name is definitely in his like ability amongst mm-hmm. older adults will, I think do well for it. It'll be the film. Yeah. Cause the older adults aren't going to grandparents aren't going to go to wonder woman or very few. <laughs> no, probably That's gonna not. That's going to be like a young person movie. And then, yeah. and then Maverick will, will get 
that we'll cut into it a little bit. Yeah, but this brings about the age-old question, <clears throat> which is the best version of Tom Hanks? Which which film version of Tom Hanks is the best version? You've got mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that on that 100 list <laughs> it's not on the 100,000 list <laughs> i love that one. Oh my goodness O-X. i think it's spell fox <laughs> oh my goodness no mine is the the castaway or oh. the oh, captain the yeah. captain phillips version i was gonna say captain Hanks. phillips too yeah big also comes to mind the probably the you know Philadelphia big even bachelor party he he sticks out because mm-hmm. he is like you're like oh he's like a real actor <laughs> even on big you're like oh like he's like a, a real actor in this yeah scene. <laughs> he's he's not a comedian like he actually yeah. can act <laughs> yeah but Captain Phillips the last ten minutes of that movie may be the most powerful ten minutes of a movie I've ever seen that actually like shakes you to your core yeah well, there's not a child or a a, a woman or a, like a, a rapey scene involved like this is just like a real person being affected by emotions it's like oh, i'm so glad you brought up captain phillips that movie's so good <laughs> that last and it's it's not one that's like spoken about or banded about in his yeah like, it's so underrated but that last 10 minutes is just like whoo mm-hmm. it just it i, I still I'm, I'm shaking thinking about it because it is yeah. so dramatic i've not seen it <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's on the list now. <laughs> We're going to write it in pencil on on this list we put it on there out. for you. <laughs> but it really is underrated. That's a good choice. All I know is I I'm the captain movie. now. Yeah, you share a lot of I'm the captain now memes, but you've never seen it. <laughs> she knows famous lines, but not the famous movies. I know he's a Smalley pirate and he's like a freighter captain. And the Smalley pirates take over the ship and he has to say, I think it's based off a true story where he saves the entire crew from the ship. It I is believe, a true-ish yeah. story, but Based the real Captain story. Phillips was a real piece of work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, if it was, that's why I said based. If based, it was played loosely. true to, true to <laughs> life, it would have d- done nothing. Tom Hanks but, would have actually had to be mean. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe. Was, it, it, he played it well, being like a, a tough jerk, but not like an actual jerk. Yeah. Like he's like just a really stern guy. Yeah. Didn't but he, the real Captain Phillips was yeah. a real Did piece he of work. Do, well, he's a freighter lawn like Atlantic freighter captain. Yeah, those guys are always much more tougher rough. than Tom Hanks made him appear to be. Yeah. <laughs> but the movie is still uh, very good. Then then he was in Sully, right? He did that? Mm-hmm. Bridge of Spies before that too, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah, in the post after that. He has a he has a lane now. You've got mail. Still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice rom com. <laughs> Love my grind. <laughs> uh was that it for all the trailers then? That, that I think was. so. Yeah, yeah, all like the big ones because there's just so much uh, kids product out there. Yeah, and Annabelle was one we had on our list, but that was just you're not sure what it's going to be. No, but it, I love it. 42 it looks, seconds it, it for looks, a trailer, nothing to show. It looks oh, great. It. it looks dark. It looks like terrible, horrifying subject matter, and you're not sure which way it's going to end up. Yeah. Oh, did you have Candyman trailer on there? We talked about uh, it last week, and I will talk about it again if you want. I finally watched it. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, really? I don't like horror. It's too much blood in that trailer. <laughs> too many children deaths. And I'm sure Ken disagrees I mean, and loves it still. They're dumb teenage girls and you kind of want them to go, but <laughs> I still feel bad about it. There was a lot of backlash this week because it didn't really hit viral. The trailer didn't when it was released, but there's uh, the Beyonce song that's in it that people are very upset that the director may have ruined by putting it in this movie. <laughs> that's what, I mean, Jordan Peele wasn't the director. He produces things, produced but that's it, what yeah. he does. He takes <laughs> songs you don't think about and twists them into horror genres. Yeah. It's brilliant. He's an Uh-oh. artiste. Until he, until he messes with Beyonce. <laughs> I think even Beyonce was like, all right. All right. Speaking of songs and the end <laughs> of uh, podcast episodes, anything yeah. you'd like to say, Cody, to all the single ladies out there? <laughs> no, don't entice me. You're so bad. <laughs> Try to do it for two weeks in a row. I super love Beyonce, so you're not going to get me on that one. Well, Kyle, you want to put a ring on this episode? Uh, <laughs> like this... I put a ring on Ken. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think that worked quite what you were hoping for it to I'm work. just trying to embarrass Kid. 
Yeah, I can take us out of here. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's like, let's just shut this down now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so thank you everyone for listening to the Off the Break podcast. You can find us on all p- podcast platforms and over at our website, silverscreeninsider.com. And be sure to check out our website. Uh, if you're a theater owner or manager who needed updated and accurate information on all upcoming films, that's what we are here for. Yeah. Please like us on Facebook and put in any recommendations for classic movies that Cody needs to watch and scoff at I will. in the comments. Perfect. More likely have not seen them, so any <laughs> suggestion is probably welcome. Throw them at us. <laughs> Throw them out there. <laughs> I will gladly watch Seeing in the Rain and give you guys my feedback. I actually can't wait. I, I want to wa- re-watch these as well, Yeah. so I can't wait to like rewatch Seeing in the Rain because it's been a I while. just make notes as I watch it. My, it's okay to do so. Yep. <laughs> if by make notes, notes you mean flip through Instagram while you watch it sounds good I promise I will actually watch it focused laser focused so that I imprint in my brain so when you ask me in like 10 years if I've seen this movie I can name off more Let parts of the movie get my notes yeah <laughs> rose the paper out <laughs> on his deathbed <laughs> alright uh, until next time yep Is that how we close these out? Yep. Have a good weekend. All right.